This is land my wife and I purchased about 10 years ago and actually when commodity prices were pretty high in the grains, uh, this was all dry land farm ground and uh, a lot of people questioned my sanity, but we turned it into this cattle production oriented facility. So and we've had a lot of fun with it and it's been really good to us. I've got uh, native grass in these two pastures and a cool season alfalfa blend in this pasture over here. So we rotate through the three traps. This herd that's intact today is a, a result of what my dad started back in 1960 and my siblings and I were all involved and now it's primarily myself and my wife and my son. And, um, but we've also incorporated uh, over the last, since my son Kane's been showing the last 10, 12 years, uh, some females we've brought in uh, and uh, we have a pretty large Shorthorn Plus contingent because of the We've chose to show a lot of shorthorn plus heifers over the last 10, 12 years. The first thing we like about that mating with shorthorns oil and angus is that we provide them a lot of heterosis, a lot of grow, and, and also turn back, turn down the docility. Hopefully, a, a, a nicer animal hand, handling animal in this case. Uh, we think that's a big factor as well. Yeah, as you can see, as we walk through these cattle, uh, they're. They're super quiet and easy to work with. Uh, it makes it nice when you're AI in cattle or, or uh, having to work them. You know, nobody's getting hurt, no issues, no problems. So we like the docility in them, that's for sure. But I truly find the value in the cattle in terms of their maternal ability, their marbling ability, their docility, and uh, the marketability of them, really, in our world. Uh, uh, it's something that we can sell in many facets, and you know, they're going to, uh, lay down half calves, raise calves, mother them, take care of them, produce heavy calves at weaning. But secondly, when you take those cattle out and whether you use them in the seed stock application and, and go that way with producing show heifers or show cattle, you can do that to an advantage to yourself. Or uh, those cattle also will grow up if you take them on the commercial side, they're gonna have uh, adequate marbling and then also have be very high cutability kind of cattle. So they're very productive in the feed yard as well. You know, this is one of the toughest winters I ever have went through uh, in my lifetime in terms of weather and challenges. Uh, it was a long, cold, snowy, rough winter all through cabin, even before cabin. The cattle persevered pretty darn well. Um, they're very maternal in their overall makeup. And then as time has gone on, and, and I think as we are become better geneticists, we can, we've developed these cattle to be even more productive in their application depending on what part of the country and what your target market is. Uh, we just have so many more factors that we can utilize to make those decisions that uh, it's made us better breeders. And you've got reputation breeders that still take their short horn red hided cattle to the sale barns and they'll, in Kansas I can quote it, in South Dakota I can quote it, that they can top their markets. Uh, um, they can do it. And also that the, the show cattle realm of it, people can have a nice small herd of cattle that doesn't overwhelm them yet they can raise some cattle. Not only they can, maybe their kids can show them themselves, but they can also market some progeny. Um, on the large scale, you know, I've got the privilege to work with some firms across the land that have some numbers, and they, their, their demand grows as well because they can supply the numbers, and that increases their customer base, or at least the inquiry they have. You know, we've got leadership in our association, and we've got a board of directors and, a, and a office staff and management that um, our forward thinking and thinking outside the box and putting us in a position to be viable in the beef industry more so than we are now and we've seen gains in that already and so I like to think of it as a team effort you know between our breeders our ASA staff and board of directors and myself and, and others involved in this beef breed to, to work together to uh, continually work to make better cattle if we make better cattle the thing will grow You know, I love coming out here when I'm not on the road, 6.30 in the morning, and seeing them just like this. Especially when, I mean, I like cabin too, but when they're out here and you got these new calves coming on and you see the genetic progress you're making, and then you also start to think about what you can do better the next time. So uh, that's what makes it all work for me. This is a place where I can come. It gives me peace and comfort to be out here uh, going through these cattle, tending to them.